Christmas. Thank you so much for joining us today. And I know what this means in this particular season. If you're like me, it's kind of really busy, right? You're kind of running around, last minute stuff, preparations, all these things, but thank you. Thank you for taking time, time out of your busy, hectic schedule, all the demands on you. Thank you for taking time to nestle in with us as well as nestle in with Jesus, because really, and we know this to be true, Jesus is why we do all this stuff, all this celebration, activity, frenzied events, all these things is because of Jesus. And you know, I was praying about our time together and I felt like God dropped a verse in my heart for you, for me as well, particularly in this season. And it's Colossians 3, 16, and it says, let the word of Christ richly dwell within you. And you know, at this time in your, in your busy life and all the demands, it's easy, super easy to kind of let the Bible just kind of take a back seat because we just have all these pulls on us. But this is just an encouraging verse to you today to let the word of Christ dwell richly, richly in you. So pick up the phone or get on the website. We want to pray with you that God would give you those opportunities, those moments, those times, those little pullaways. And what I find when I love this with God does this, things sometimes get canceled, right? That's awesome because then it adds up a little, opens up a little bit of time for me to get some of the Bible more inside of my heart. So whatever it is in your life, we want to pray for you. Of course, that the word of Christ would dwell richly in you. But remember too, we like to pray for you on anything. So your health, your finances, family, of course, family, we all got family stuff going right now. Uh, whatever the needs are in your life, your job, your school, whatever, we love to pray for you. So hop on the phone, get on the website. We're eager and available to pray with you today. And mom, you know, we're talking to, about Christmas. It seems appropriate, right? We're on, oh, right on the very, cusp of it. Very, very, mm -hmm. very. And I love this. People's hearts are more open yeah. to spiritual things at Christmas time. So I had an opportunity the other day, and I want to encourage you with this too. Uh, I went to AA because I like to go. AA is? Alcoholics Anonymous. Right. <laughs> and I've never drank really, got involved, but I love to go to their meetings. So one of the men there who is often there on Sunday morning, you know, he said to me, you know, I don't believe in God. Don't talk to me about all that. You know, yeah, there's a higher power. But I began to pray for him. And, you know, it says that the Father draws people. So he has received the Lord. And so when I went in, I took him a daily devotional. Oh, he said, I love that. I'm reading it every day. And my neighbor is reading it with me. <laughs> you know, do you think that made my season happy? And so watch for little opportunities. You know, who knows? Someone may need prayer at this time and you can be used of God. So it's not just a selfish time. What am I going to give? What am I going to get? But what am I going to give as light to people who need light so much? So I just encourage you. Also, you know, today, Sarah, we're going to be ministering about angels. Everybody likes angels. And so we have a really special book here called Angels All Around. And it really gives you Genesis to Revelation about angels and that there are different kinds. So I want you to be sure you call in and get the book. Now, Sarah, this, tell about this. Because this is beautiful. Yeah, it really oh, has some my goodness, neat little beautiful. gifts inside with different oils, three different oils, and, you know, kind of representative of the Christmas season. And so we just encourage you to hop on the phone. This would be a great gift. I mean, a great gift any time of the year, but particularly in the Christmas season. It's like what the wise men brought to celebrate Jesus. So it's a good witness for you on your table. And, oh, the smells of it are wonderful. <laughs> and so you can use that. So call in and I'm going to ask you to do two things. Give the names of your loved ones that you want prayer for, that they would really know Jesus. You know, this is Christmas, that's Christ, that they would have a revelation. Because I think that the Holy Spirit draws people. Give us just first names quickly. And then of course you say, oh, I need all of that. You know, and so say, you know, I want that special Christmas package. Really, you will love it. Put my hand on my heart. This book, Angels All Around, was birthed in my heart many years ago 
but I have experienced angels in my life when I pray the promises of God. And mom, I think, you know, in Christmas time, there's really, there's a significant angelic visit, right? I mean, there is. <laughs> you read about this and it's in Luke chapter one and there's right. two angelic visits. There's one to Zacharias right. and both of them by Gabriel. And then there's obviously one to Mary uh, to foretell the birth of Jesus. But those, that was an angelic visit. And I like that because it's at Christmas time is when we celebrate the birth of Jesus. Right. And it was announced ahead of time by an angel, by Gabriel. Now who's Gabriel? He's an archangel because you have ranks of angels. And I tell about this in the book. So you have archangels, you have seraphim, you have cherubim, you have warring angels, you have guardian angels. Hmm. So angels, and I would say this to you, never pray to angels. Angels move at the command of God's word. Pray to the Father in the name of Jesus and pray the promises, and then the promises fall on the angels to help bring it to pass. So we don't pray to angels, we pray the promise, and angels get active through the Word of God. Nice. You know, the other thing on, on the angel appearing to Zacharias, Gabriel, uh, this was interesting because Gabriel, it says here in Luke 1, uh, verses 8, 9, and 10, that Gabriel was ministering, he's a priest, and he's ministering to God in the holy place next to the altar of incense, and, and Gabriel, Zacharias is ministering, and Gabriel appears to him, verse 11, angel of the Lord appeared to him standing to the right of the altar, and Zacharias was troubled. I guess, <laughs> I guess I would be too. I, yeah, I know, because wow. who thinks about it? And that's a question I have. Are there angels, you know, the Bible says that some have entertained angels unaware. Right. So are there times in our lives, maybe, that there's, so to speak, angelic visits that we might not know about? or not, might not recognize. Until later. Right. And then we think, how did I get through that? And so I have a real good friend. She went to China with me on one of our first trips. We had 150 people. She loved getting Bibles into China, which was a challenge at that time. And she wanted to go the second time. We prayed about it. We said, okay. And she went in and she got the Bibles where they were supposed to go, but then she had to walk back to the train station. It was dark. She didn't know where to go. And so she prayed. She said, God, you know, I'm lost. I don't know what to do. And two people came along and spoke English. Now, you know, <laughs> Chinese people don't speak English easily, especially at that time. And they said, where are you going? Well, I'm going to the train station. They said, we'll help you. And so when they got almost there, she took her bracelet off to give it to one of them and they had disappeared. Those are angels unaware. Sarah, I have to tell about something that happened to me. The first time I went to Pakistan, that would have been 95. And they said, you cannot have a healing meeting in Pakistan and advertise it. Or, you know, you'll just bring all kinds of persecution. And these were pastors, local pastors. I don't want to hurt them. And an angel, and I haven't had a lot of angelic visitations I'm aware of, but an angel appeared and he went all the way six stories up and I said, we will not be killed. I just saw this angel. He's here in our midst. Now, that was my first meeting. And, you know, of course, got getting involved with seven. But angels, they're, they're wonderful, but we don't pray to them. No, and, and I would encourage each person watching, hop on the phone, uh, get on the website, grab a couple copies of Angels All Around. One of the things that I deeply appreciate, Mom, about you is that everything you do is biblically grounded. I mean, you don't talk about stuff that's kind of like, you know, ethereal and kind of esoteric, theological, but super grounded in what does a Bible say? And uh, yeah. I think that's got to be ground zero. So hop on the phone, get on the website. This, this little book is chock full of Bible stuff as it relates to angels. And it helps us not get kind of spooky kooky in our theology or like, ooh, you know, weird and, and kind of lose the plot, but really keeps us grounded biblically. What, it, what, it, what are angels? What do they do? And, and how do we interact with them? And I'm going to ask you a question, mom. Okay, David I'll asked me an this, right? This a was a David one. question. My okay. son, David, he's yeah. super smart, right? Yes. And uh, he says to me, I was putting him to bed. I think it was last night or night before last. He's like, Hey mom, who are the sons of God? 
that's spoken of in Genesis, right, that came down and uh, made, had wives, right, with the right, sons right. of men. Go so ahead. I was like, well, I'm going to ask Mimi because Mimi knows all that kind of stuff. What would you <laughs> say to that, Mom? Well, those are fallen angels because Satan was an archangel, you know, and he was in charge of all the worship and he fell because he said, you know, I want to be higher than God or I want to be like God. And when he fell, he took a third of the angels with him. So just be encouraged. Two thirds are with us, more are with us than against us. And so I believe that those were fallen angels who cohabited with women and giants were born. Now that's what I see. But I'm going to tell you in this book, and I'm going to look at the introduction, Sarah, because I think people have questions and they get into kind of spooky, kooky things. But we talk about angels in the past. That's in the first chapter. Then we talk about angelic conflict. And then we talk about angels in Jesus' life. And then we talk about angels and the disciples. So it's strictly biblical and angels and the present. So this is something very important for you to have. And of course, you know, this is a package deal. Put your hand on your heart, say a package deal. And this is a good time to call in and get these. And you may want two or three because this is Christmas time. We like to give gifts, right? Give them something that will draw them closer to Jesus. They'll know him in a better way. Sometimes Christmas can be so fluffy, so frivolous, but this is Jesus time. Put your hand on your heart. Say Christmas is Jesus time. And Sarah and I'll be right back. The best is ahead. So stay right there. We want to minister to you. God's mighty angelic host is not as invisible as you may think. For your gift of $50 or more, we will send you Angels All Around. In this book, Marilyn takes you on a behind-the-scenes spiritual adventure designed to convince Christians and skeptics alike of angelic intervention in the affairs of mankind. We will also include Marilyn's Heaven and Angels two-CD teaching set, where she answers the question of the existence of angels and teaches on the specific angelic appearances mentioned throughout the Bible. To complete this offer, we will also send you this beautiful stained glass keepsake box, which includes a bottle of rich anointing oil. Learn about the supernatural warfare angels fight on your behalf and draw comfort in knowing guardian angels are assigned to you and your loved ones. Call or click today to receive this amazing resource. Where I wandered states of night. My friends, the adults, did things they don't want me to see. When you can see my ribs, one with my hair was falling out. do everything it takes. We are so glad you're watching, especially in this busy Christmas season. I know. <laughs> Man, I know there's all kinds of demands on your time and things you got to do, last minute stuff, unexpected things that pop up, but we're really grateful, grateful for your time, grateful for your um, willingness to let the Holy Spirit speak to you um, through us and through this time together. So, you know, Mom, one of the things that I like about this book, uh, Angels All Around, is sometimes people who are not real firm believers in Jesus, you know, they're kind of like, eh, you know, he's an enlightened teacher, moral philosopher, whatever. Sometimes people that don't really have too much interest in Jesus, they can be interested in angels. They can be. Right? Because, now this is kind of funny to me. But you know, these little cherub looking things, you know, they'll put them on the walls and you know, 
and really, when you look at angels in the Bible, cherubim are strong angels. You know, they are ranks of angels that help people, and they are on the mercy seat, the cherubim. And so I just encourage you today, you know, to call in and get this book. This would be a really wonderful gift because people that maybe, you know, they just think, oh, little sweet angels, I've got them on the wall and don't know a thing about Jesus. This will really help them. And it's, it's not hard to read. It's easy and it has some experiences, but with the package, I like this because I like smells. <laughs> and we have these beautiful smells in this. Look, isn't that a nice box? And, you know, we have frankincense, we have myrrh, and I think the other one is rosemary. It's always oh, it Rose of Sharon, I think. Rose like of that. Sharon, yeah. exactly. You said it right. Now, see, this is a nice gift for someone. So we're looking for gifts, but I'm going to say this to you. What about meaningful gifts? What about gifts that will last and do something in their life? What about gifts that will point them to Jesus? You know, and this is not a long book. It's short and pithy, crisp, and to the point that you will say, my goodness, I didn't realize guardian angels were around me. I didn't realize that archangels bring birth announcements. <sighs> you say, I don't want one to visit me. But anyway, call us with special prayer requests for this season. Maybe, you know, Sarah, some people are very depressed at this time because they have lost loved ones or they're not with their families. They don't have anybody. They're lonely. It's kind of a dark time. And I believe Jesus can minister to you in this time. So I'm going to share something very personal. When my husband died over three years ago, you know, I remember waking up one morning and I was so happy and I thought, where did all this joy come from? Now this is, you know, usually you're grieving and the Lord said, angels danced over you in the night. And folks, I'm going to tell you, Jesus carried your griefs and he sent angels to guard and minister to you. Don't let this be a downtime. Let Jesus move in you and be an uptime. And if you're just having a problem with grief and loneliness and rejection, and maybe you've blown it all and that's why your family's turned off with you, you just call us for prayer. I mean, Jesus, how can I say this, is the best present in the world. It's totally true. You know, Mom, I had to really be honest, transparent here. Please. When I was first married, Reese got me, for Christmas, he would get, my husband would get me um, it's random gifts. I mean, yeah. in his mind, and they're pretty stereotypical things that people, women normally like. But um, I'm not very good at kind of some of that stereotypical stuff. Yeah. And so he learned after a couple of years, you know, Sarah prefers, you know, books <laughs> and practical things. Yeah. And that's just the truth. So I was thinking about, you know, you said we like things that are practical. And I was thinking about this in relation to these various oils. Now, here's the interesting idea as far as practical gifts. Recently, Reese and I were invited by one of our church members who bought a new home and they asked us to come and pray and dedicate their house. Good. Which is totally cool, right? Good. But I, I was thinking back and we prayed over the front door, you know, and we anointed the front door, right? And it reminded me, it reminded me of the angel, the death angel that passed over, right, in Exodus. And because there was, the doors were anointed with the blood, blood of the sheep and, the, you know, so, and that was for the uh, Jewish Israel, nation of Israel. And so what happened is, in essence, they marked their doors, marked the entryways and said, we don't belong to the Egyptians. We are Jewish. We are of the nation of Israel. And because of that sign or whatever on their doorposts and everything, the death angel passed over. So all that to say, and we're talking about angels, but also saying, practically speaking, be, be super powerful for each person to call and, and, and really have this as a gift in their own home to anoint their own doors, to anoint the doors of their friends, neighbors, relatives, and see it as a practical way as well for the presence of God to be um, welcomed and, and you know, kind of uh, revered 
in that home. So I was thinking about it. I was like, yeah, this isn't just decorative, because it is. It's very decorative, but it's also practical in the sense of, hey, we can pray over our homes, anoint our homes, make sure that the Holy Spirit's welcome and invited and revered in our homes, and uh, tell the death angel, you know, see you later, hit the road. <laughs> right? And I like this too, because usually at Christmas time we have unsaved people, family, maybe friends. I don't know who all you have. And you want them to feel the presence of God, you know. And, uh, and these are times sometimes we need knitting and bonding with broken relationships. So this is a good thing too. But who is on your heart that is not born again? Who is on your heart that is backslidden that you want to reach out to in this season, at least in prayer? We'd like to join you. Would you just call in and give their first names? Don't talk a long time, you know. We, we're not a counseling line, but we are a prayer line. And we know that God answers prayer. And you never know how He's going to do it. So don't just look at Christmas and think, oh dear, you know, I've got these jerks coming. Let's see Jesus change jerks. Let's pray over that. And let's pray that you're not just hassled. You know, I know what it means. You can be hassled at this time. You know, we've got to see Jesus. We've got to know His presence. We've got to know He's the reason for the season. And Mom, as we finish up here, I love this part uh, on this angelic visit with Gabriel to Zacharias, yes. right? And he's ministering in the holy right. place. And Gabriel, or Zacharias says to him, how can I know because Gabriel told him, your wife's going to get pregnant. And she, he's like, that's not possible. You know, she's <laughs> too well old. past the age. And he says, how can I know this for certain? I'm an old man. She's old too. And Gabriel says this. I think this is super powerful and I love it. <laughs> I am Gabriel who stands in the presence of God and I have been sent to speak to you. He's like, hey, who do you think I am? I'm not just some kind of, you know, half-baked <laughs> little vision or pizza dream that you had here. I'm the real deal. Who do you think this is? And then I like this too. He says, you shall be silent and unable to speak until the day these things take place because you didn't believe. Wow. He puts him on mute for nine months. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he mutes him because of the unbelief. And, you know, I just <laughs> encourage you, you might be listening today, might be watching, and this is a little bit provoking. And I want to say this with a lot of gentle, tender compassion. But I also want to challenge you that let's be people of faith, and not people of unbelief. You know, Zacharias, he was a priest. <laughs> he knew the Word of God. If anybody should have been a person of faith, in my thinking, it should have been Zacharias. He knew the Bible. He knew the Word of God. He had ministered to God. He was an older gentleman, so it wasn't like he was new in this whole little thing. He was, he was one of the, the premier people who should be full of faith, and yet he struggled with unbelief. Family, let's make the decision to be stronger in faith and weaker in unbelief. The world around us doesn't need us to be mute. The world around us needs to be full of faith and full of love. Faith works by love. So let's have that in our hearts, that we're, we're absolutely committed to being faithful as well as faith-filled. And really, that's such an important ingredient that, that our world needs so desperately in this day and in this season. Make sure you hop on the phone, grab your copy, get on the website, Angels All Around, and the cool little decorative book here, and, or little box here with all the oils in it. You know, it's super important that we celebrate the name of Jesus in this season. And yeah, we're busy, but there's nothing more important than Jesus, and Jesus being exalted in us as well as through us in this season today. God's mighty angelic host is not as invisible as you may think. For your gift of $50 or more, we will send you Angels All Around. In this book, Marilyn takes you on a behind-the-scenes spiritual adventure designed to convince Christians and skeptics alike of angelic intervention in the affairs of mankind. We will also include Marilyn's Heaven and Angels 2 CD teaching set, where she answers the question of the existence of angels and teaches on the specific angelic appearances mentioned throughout the Bible. To complete this offer, we will also send you this beautiful stained glass keepsake box, which includes a bottle of rich anointing oil. Learn about the supernatural warfare angels fight on your behalf 
and draw comfort in knowing guardian angels are assigned to you and your loved ones. Call or click today to receive this amazing resource. Together, we are impacting thousands of lives with the truth, compassion, and power of God's Word. But there is still much more to be done. By becoming a partner with Marilyn Hickey Ministries, you'll share in bringing God's miracles and healing to the sick, experiencing a deep love for the Bible, and taking the gospel to the nations. When you become a $30 a month partner with Marilyn and Sarah, we'll send you our welcome gift package, which includes the Jehovah Rapha Oil Vial with oil prayed over by Marilyn and Sarah, our exclusive partner CD set, which includes six CDs featuring 12 never before released teachings, the Majesty Coffee Table Book featuring beautiful representations of the names of God and more. If you have a passion to reach the lost and are ready to release the anointing of God into your life, then join us today by becoming a partner. Call or click today and help Marilyn and Sarah cover the earth with the word. Thank you so much for joining us today. And you know, as we finish this time, we've talked a lot about you calling in and praying, asking Jesus in your heart, brand new beginning, all those things. But <laughs> here's the deal. Both mom and I have this deep passion in our hearts for you to have a personal relationship with Jesus. And so I want to invite you at the, at the close of our time together today to invite Jesus into your life, into your heart. And you say, well, he's already there. Great, then let's do it again. Couldn't hurt. In fact, I always say, let's have more, right? And maybe you're watching today and you've been cold, indifferent, disappointed. Maybe you've even been mad at God. Best time to start a new relationship with God is Christmas time. So let's pray this prayer. Say this with me today, inviting Jesus into your heart. Everybody, everybody watching, let's say this now. Jesus, thank you for coming and dying on the cross for me. I know I've done some wrong things and made some bad mistakes. Please forgive me and come into my life, come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior from this moment for the rest of eternity. Thank you for loving me and saving me today in your name. Amen. Oh, that's the best thing you could pray in your whole life. Because life turns, that's the fulcrum, it's the turning point, it's the change. And beginning a brand new relationship with Jesus, really that's why he came, born of a virgin, died on the cross, rose again from the dead, so that we could walk in newness of life, full vitality, presence of the Holy Spirit. Mom, Jesus really is the reason for this season. He really is, and this is so good to me, Sarah. We're not in a religion. We're in a relationship. There are a lot of religions, and all of them have some good things, but Jesus is a relationship to you this Christmas. 